good morning, or Mahlzeit, as we would say in the utility industry, and <laughs> happy to be here. Um, Cisco, we are notoriously famous for having built the internet. Will the utility transition be 10 times bigger? I don't know. I didn't say it. John Chambers did. But we are famous for having built the internet, and that's sort of the impediment we are working with, because a lot of people, when they hear Cisco, see Cisco, that's the company that's doing the routers and switches. That's the company that I have my nerds that eat pizza, drink Coke, and they're doing something in the cabinet. Well, we have progressed from that state over the past few years, over the past decades, actually, and uh, moved into many other spaces. Before I do the Cisco on Cisco thing, uh, how many in here that you have been working in the energy utility industry believe they have an understanding of what we are up to in the energy industry? Give me some hands here. Okay, a few, a few brave ones here. Well, thank God. Um, I hope I can change that perception of Cisco today. What we are trying to do, why we are trying to do this, I spare you any sort of product presentation and then don't take you through the fact sheets. Um, I'd rather explain to you why we are doing what we are doing, and then we can have an offside conversation around what it is that we are actually doing. Cisco, 60,000 people strong, about 20,000 engineers in R&D, 20,000 in sales, and God knows what the rest of the 20,000 does. I haven't figured it out yet. We have about 40 billion in the bank, so we are a good company to talk to if you need money, but be sure you know exactly why you want to talk to us, because oftentimes when I hear that, um, when we are being approached by companies that do want to partner with us, I give the pushback, you know what, actually, don't you like your company anymore? Why would you want to sell it? If it's a great idea, then why don't you develop it? Work with us, we help you develop it, and I get to that point later on in the presentation. But don't approach us simply for saying, you know what, I've got a great company, it's been operating for th three years, buy it. That's not going to happen. So Cisco, smart grid, critonomics. Um, with critonomics, we don't only mean the grid. Smart grid is an overstretched express, an overused, misleading. What we see is really with critonomics, the entirety of the energy system. And this is what I would like to talk about today. Let's see if this is working. Yes, it is. Industry transition. We just heard about it this morning, industry transitions. John Chambers, being famous for his sayings, put forward the famous words, industry transitions don't wait for anyone to happen. And they really don't. Look back, when, when I was growing up as a small child, um, we had actually uh, a very limited set of television channels. At that time, we had RD, ZDF, I was living in the South, SWF 3, and I was really lucky living close to the Austrian border, we had ORF 1 and ORF 2. That was really an outstanding position to be in because we had five channels. Others in Germany only had three. Amazing, isn't it? Now we have YouTube, base, we have iTunes, we have customers actually defining their own television program. An impressive speed of change in an industry, the television industry, energy industry. Um, energy industry is moving at a different pace, admittedly, but actually, or it's used to a different pace, but actually the pace of change has dramatically picked up. Think about Ice Age on speed. 1986, when we had the uh, first uh, major nuclear accident that kept also all of us busy. I think most of us still remember the day when that happened and where we were when we heard about the news. Well, we didn't have a nuclear accident at that time. Bakersdorf, you had Germany at the brink of a civil war around um, nuclear um, contamination. We didn't have a nuclear accident at that time. We could see the glaciers somewhere back there in the past, slowly uh, approaching. And then we, we actually lived in a world for a long time where we believed, yes, it may be approaching, maybe not, maybe it's actually not coming our way, but it's moving slightly to the side, so we are safe. And then we had Fukushima, and bang, all of a sudden, we have that glacier accelerating our way. Who would have thought 20 years ago that we would have 8 gigawatts of um, solar power installed in Germany in a single year? Unbelievable. So we are living in an age of transition, and we need to figure out what do we do with it, how do we move forward, and how do we actually work together to change the industry. And this is the mission we are on, changing the industry. Now, Gerd gave a, a wonderful presentation yesterday about what he called the future, uh, futurist, yes. Um, and actually I was thinking all the time, yes, he's right, that's probably how the future looks like, 
But actually, we do have a different opinion, because this is not the future he was talking about. This is actually happening today. The only difference is that it's not all happening today at the same time, but we see all the bits and pieces, as futuristic as they may sometimes sound, happening today. Napster of Energy, we are working actually with utility companies on becoming the Napster of Energy. Now, what does that mean? It's not simply a utility setting up another web page where they allow um, customers to trade energy on it. That's not it. But it's really changing the fundamentals of an integrated utility. As Norbert Favai just said rightly, we are still part of RWE. We can't act in a free space. There are boundaries that we are tied to, and we want to be part of a corporation that is transforming the entirety of that corporation, and not only a single part of it moving off and doing something else. That wouldn't help us all, because in the end, if you like it or not, we all are very much dependent on the energy system as it is today, and we need to work together to take it forward. But it's very encouraging that we see all that innovation. We just don't see enough of it happening at the same time in a coherent way. And coherence, from my perspective, is really the key challenge there. Because what we see happening on the side of the politics is really great ideas about 2050, not so good ideas of how we actually get there. And getting there is the hard part. We all can dream of the, the clean space where we have only electric vehicles, solar, wind power, clean water, scarce resources are managed correctly and properly and distributed evenly amongst mankind. Good ideas. That's not the hard part. I mean, anybody can come up with ideas like that. But actually, defining the path and the boundaries on the way to that bright, clear future, that's the difficult part. That's what, what we want to work on with, um, together with our friends in the utility industry. So, because it's difficult to define the path to that bright future, we have defined a model that we call gridonomics. And remember, grid is not only the electricity grid, it's really the energy system. Gridonomics. Gridonomics is about combining technology, economics, and policy making. And it goes well beyond the question, do we have clean, green, or dirty energy in the future? It's really addressing all the challenges, or trying to address all the challenges the industry is having in itself. And some of the challenges are as basic as, do we have enough, will we have enough skilled employees 10 years from now that are capable of maintaining an energy system that we have built, that we are proud of, that runs? And we are actually at risk that we don't. If you look at EDF sustainability report from last year, they have 50-50% of their technicians, operational people, retiring in the next five years. Wow. I mean, that's a turn rate. Any consultancy is currently running at 12 to 15 percent, and it's feeling itself stretched. Try to imagine that you have a, a countrywide organization that is dependent upon the technical skills of that workforce, fluctuating at 10, 15 percent per year. Amazing. How do you manage that? And yes, you can, say, you can all say utilities, fat cats, they may have been overstaffed in the past anyway. Well, they may have, but currently I don't think we see too much overstaffing going on there anymore. And the system that we have today is actually at the risk of falling apart if we don't invest properly. That's part of the conversations we have been having over the past two days. We need to be doing both. We need to invest into new technologies, but still be capable and prepared to accept that we also need to invest in the existing infrastructure and the existing capabilities. Policy making. Policy making, from my perspective, is regulation is actually administering the past. Politicians may have 2050 in mind, but the regulation that we see happening really across the globe is backward oriented. It's trying to fix bits and pieces somewhere there. Do we need a feed in tariff of one point of whatever sense? Doesn't really matter because that discussion doesn't help us on the transition to the new energy system. We need a different regulation there in place. And even if I had the chance, I wouldn't want to be the CEO of a large utility right now, because if you look at all those challenges a single utility is facing, that's very daunting. How do you address all those changes? How do you make the transition happen? Massive challenge for utilities. Massive challenge for all the stakeholders in the energy system. And we need to work together to actually make the transition happen. Well, let's go into more detail around that. Um, one of my favorites is the combination of IT and OT, information technology, basic, basic enterprise IT, the stuff I was talking about before, router switches, IP phones, whatever you want, and OT, operations technology, the SCADA systems. Now, from my perspective, that's really caveman meeting Captain Kirk. 
and cavemen really being OT in that, um, in that case. We are working with technology that comes from the 70s, sometimes even earlier than that. Yes, we do have a smart grid in large parts of it. Transmission systems have been smart for a long time th since the 70s, but the challenge really is they haven't changed since the 70s. It's technologies from the 70s. And now we want to take this to the new world. On the other hand, on the IT side, utility customers are amongst the most advanced customers and users of IT, this side of the banking industry probably, but only in their carpeted office space. So we need to bring those both worlds together. And new challenges arise from doing so. I had a conversation with a large offshore um, company the other day about wireless, workforce optimization, collaboration, video on an, on an oil rig, and those type of things. And they actually said, you know what, actually, our greatest concern is Wi-Fi security. I was thinking, 150 miles off the coast of Scotland, you're worried about Wi-Fi security. And they were saying, well, do I know what the next Greenpeace shift is up to? Interesting thing. Who will be hacking into the, uh, the wind farms offshore that we are all dependent upon? 10 megawatt turbines not operating all of a sudden. Great risk there. So we need to bring the both fears together and make sure that actually what we have in utility is operating going forward. Um, prosumer. Um, I really like the part about the smart home, and I think RWE is probably amongst the, the boldest movers in that space from the large-scale utilities. But when we think about prosumers from the larger perspective, looking beyond what's happening in the home, we see a lot of utilities actually thinking, yes, a prosumer that is somebody that does have a smart meter, and the daredevil devils might put uh, a battery on top of it, electric vehicle, but still, that's not a prosumer. A prosumer is somebody that can de make deliberate decisions where to source the electricity from, when to source it, when to use it, when to sell it. And for that to be possible, we don't only need the part that's happening in the home, that's a pre pre prerequisite, we also need the grid itself. And that needs a change in the attitude of grid operators. They will not be an essential part anymore managing something there. There will be a basic infrastructure that is there, there for other people to use. Very much like what we have seen in the fiber optics space in the service provider space, but that transition has happened quite a while ago. Regulation, I've said before, I think it's backward looking. We need boundaries, how to get to that new world. We need innovative thinking in regulators, not happening today. And the role that we want to play is, we want to bring it together. It's the internet of things, clearly we are famous for IP, for the connectivity. We want to enable that because it's not connected today, other than by physical copper cables, at least to a large extent. We need to create that connectivity. We need to create a platform. And again, we don't want to have an active role in terms of managing a system whatsoever. We don't want to become a utility. We want to be a facilitator in the transition. And then, yep, right at the end of it, saved by the bell, the eye chart. Um, it's a complex world that we live in, and creating that coherent fabric is actually a challenge because what we have right now is siloed infrastructure. Siloed infrastructure, they need to be overcome, because if we talk about the internet of things, it's not the internet of silos, it's the internet of anything is connected to anything else, or at least can be connected if you choose to. And then, really, this time the uh, famous final words, I uh, need a new partnering structure. No company on its own can claim that they are building the, the internet, they're building the internet of the power system, the smart grid, the new energy system, all by themselves. This was the, day, the way of power systems have been built in the past. You had the likes of Siemens, ABB, Schneider, Alstom, whoever. You needed a power plant, you just contracted that. With the interconnected energy system, this is not going to happen um, going forward. We need to work together. And that's then coming back to your startup, saying, if you have a startup that is interested in working with us, really make the startup interested in working with us. We can help you scale. We can help you become part of that ecosystem, but I don't think we're going to buy it. Thank you. <laughs>